Okay, welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 1.2 on multi-step equations, and I'm going to highlight that for us. It's multi-step equations, in which we ask the essential question, how can you use multi-step equations to solve real-life problems? Okay, so these essential questions aren't exactly the most imaginative things. But uh, we want to focus on the idea we have multi-step. In Lesson 1.1, we just did one operation in order to uh, discern the value of the variable that made the equation true. In this case, we're going to have a few different examples where we have to do more than one. Okay, so to solve a multi-step equation, simplify each side of the equation if necessary, then use inverse operations to isolate the variable. So uh, what does this say? The second sentence is what we did in the first lesson. The second sentence is using these inverse operations to isolate the variable. That's the solving part of it. That's the solving part of it. Remember yesterday, uh, in the first lesson, I was trying to kind of emphasize about the word solving. In uh, the first sentence here, we've got this word simplify. And what does that mean? Well, to me, that basically means do the math. I'm going to just say do the math. In other words, if it says to add something, add it if you can. If, uh, it's, if, there, if there's a multiplica multiplication operation you can do, do that. If there's you know division or subtraction you can do, do that. Essentially, you want to do all the math you can on each side of the equation um, that you can. And then you want to solve. And then you want to do what we did yesterday. So let's take a look and uh, see what that looks like in uh, some kind of like real life operations here. Oops. Okay, example one solving a two step equation. This is on page 12 of your textbook if you want a a written uh, explanation in front of you. Sometimes people like to see everything all at once. The idea behind these videos is we kind of focus on one step at a time. Okay. <clears throat> so here I have 2.5x minus 13 equals 2. Okay, so you can see what we have here. Now the x on the left side, it's being multiplied by 2.5, and then 13 is being subtracted for that from, uh, from that. So I've got two different things happening here. So the first thing we want to do is we kind of want to go back. Usually, I think you want to go backwards in the order of operations, uh, but you have to think about sides. In other words, I can't divide 2.5 from um, the left side first because I have to divide both the x and the 13 by that, and that would get a little you know, a little ugly. So let's subtract the, uh, let's subtract, I mean, let's subtract the negative 13. Let's add 13 to both sides first. Okay, so that gets me that zero. Over here I have 15, so I have 15 on the right. These become a zero. So then I'll just bring this down and I have 2.5x equals 15. So now I have one more step. So that was one step, and that, of course, was the uh, addition property of equality. And now I can divide both sides by 2.5. 2.5 divided by 2.5 becomes a 1, so that's 1 times x is x. And then 15 divided by 2.5. I should be able to do this in my head. Six. So x equals six. So here's one example of just having two different operations that needs to be done in order to isolate the variable. Okay. So get this in your notes and uh, pause if you need to. Otherwise, join us in the next problem. Example two. We're calling this combining like terms. What this says. Look at our example here. I've got a 9x minus a 6x on the right side of the equation here. That, uh, those are what we call like terms. Like terms 
I'll put, give you a little definition here. They have the same variable factor. Okay, so what are factors? Factors are things that are multiplied. So in these cases here, the 9x and the 6x, well, these are multiplied, right? 9 times x and 6 times x, and they have the same variable factor. They both have an x. So we call these like terms. Oops, like terms. Because we like them. That's not true. Because they're alike. Okay, so we call them like terms. Okay, so, so one thing we said on the opening is that we want to do all the math we can at first. So um, I have a 9x minus 6x. I can do that math. 9x minus 6x is 3x. 3x and then the plus 15 comes down. So uh, essentially what did I do here? All I did was combine these two like terms into that one term. And uh, now I can't do any math on this side, and I can't do any math on this side. So now we're going to use inverse operations. This now exactly uh, what do we have here? We have an example like example one. So I want to subtract 15 from both sides. First. So 15 minus 15 is a zero. And 12 minus 15 is negative three. Oops not 3x. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's see. I guess I have to double tap. And so if negative 3 equals 3x. I'm just bringing down that the rest of this. And this, of course, is a, is a uh, plus 0. So we can just ignore that for uh, simplicity's sake. <clears throat> Uh, now I have 3 times x, so I want to do the inverse operation of not 3 times, but I want to divide both sides by 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I have 1x. Negative 3 divided by a positive 3. Uh, negative divided by a positive is a negative, so this is a negative 1. Okay, so that's example 2, so get this into your... Um, into your notes and we will move on or pause us if you need to oops example three I got to get this clicking thing down here I guess uh, let's see <clears throat> using structure to solve a multi-step equation again uh, we want to simply the, the idea is real simple simplify each side as much as you can and then use inverse operations so on uh, this example here We've got these parentheses happening, so it's some kind of distributive property thing going on. Um, this plus three happens afterwards. So let's uh, let's use what we know about the distributive property to simplify the left side of the equation. So I'm going to use two times one and two times negative x. So two times one is two minus two x, right? Because two times negative x would be negative two x, or you can think just minus 2 times x. Okay, so there's that first part. We'll bring everything else down. So uh, what's changed? Well, I just used the distributive property to simplify uh, that part. And we'll call it sim simplify, and not really simplify. I'm actually just doing the math. Let's just call it that. I'm distributing the 2 into the parentheses. Okay, do I have like terms I can combine? Certainly. In this case, though, the like terms are the constants. Constants are just regular numbers. There's no variable. Okay? No variables. No variable term or variable factor. So 2 and 3. 2 plus 3. I can add those together and get a 5. So I have negative 2x plus 5. That equals 8. Okay, so now I have a two-step equation here because I can't do any more math on the left side. I've uh, simplified that. I can't do any math on the right side. That's already simplified. So let's just go ahead and do our uh, inverse operations here. So I want to subtract the 5 from both sides first. 
plus 5 minus 5, well, that's just going to be a 0. So that leaves me a, a negative 2x on the left. 8 minus 5 is a, a 3 on the right. Now on the left side, I've got negative 2 times x, so I can divide both sides by negative 2 then. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. That's what I want. A positive 1 times x is just x. And a positive divided by a negative will be a negative. So this is a negative 3 halves. Okay, so just a little commentary about that last answer here. Improper fractions are fine. Um, the only time you really need to convert improper fractions into mixed numbers are for like word problems because we don't say things like three halves mile. We'll say one and a half miles. So if there's a uh, unit of measure attached to it, like in a word problem, then you'll want to convert it to a mixed number. You have to think about the context of the problem in order to think about your answer. Okay. And you're going to try these two and then you'll put your answers in the uh, question uh, and the questions at the end of this pod. And I think that's, that's, that's all we have for today. Um, so I will see you in class and uh, have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.